Your low light astrophotographs will undoubtedly have noise in them and that noise is randomly distributed. So if you capture multiple exposures of the exact same scene, same composition, same settings, the noise in each of those images is going to be randomly distributed. So what that means is if you create an average of all of those images you capture, the random noise gets removed in the averaging process but the scene, which stays constant, will begin to shine through in much better detail as you lift that veil of noise. Now, of course, the problem with capturing a scene which has a foreground and a starry sky is that the stars will move between each frame. So if you average those images without doing anything first, you're gonna remove the stars in the averaging process. So you actually have to stack the foreground first and then you stack the sky separately. And before you stack the sky, you have to align all of the stars in those images before you stack them. And if that sounds complicated, don't worry, there's software that will do all of the hard work for you. I've already created a tutorial video about Sequitor, which is a free Windows program that does all of this for you. But if you're a Mac user, the best current option is a piece of software called Starry Landscape Stacker, which currently costs about 40 bucks. So in today's video, I'm going to run through a demo of Starry Landscape Stacker, and then we can compare it to Sequitor and see which one does a better job. So I've got these 16 exposures here, captured with a 35 millimeter lens at f2.8, 10 seconds, ISO 6400. And if I just lift the exposure and zoom into 100%, you can see there's a lot of noise because it's a very short exposure. And if I flick through all of the images, you'll see that there's also a light moving through the frame. There's a person or persons walking through the frame, so it'll be interesting to see what happens to those in the stacking process. But before I stack, I'm going to do some basic adjustments because I want to see what I'm doing um, in the software. So I might lift the shadows a little bit. Don't need to lift them too much because my snowy foreground is quite bright. Um, maybe drop the highlights a little bit. Just some very basic adjustments to flatten the image and see what I'm working with. And also the lens correction, so I'll come to the lens correction, enable profile correction, and remove chromatic aberration. In the detail tab, I'm actually going to remove the sharpening because if I zoom in, um, you'll see that it's actually sharpening the noise that's in the image. So I want to remove the sharpening and I'll sharpen the image after I've done the stacking and removed the noise. And I'm going to come back to the basic tab and fix the white balance. So you can see that there's a quite an off balance between the blues and the yellows, but just by looking at the histogram. So I'm going to click on the number here and slide to the left and right. And you can see that's more of a correct white balance. And I'm going to do the same for the tint. Now you can see there's a, a much better balance between the colors. So this is a more correct white balance, but I'm actually going to shift it slightly into the blue hues because I want to take a bit of artistic license with this image because it was very cold and I want to have those cold blue tones. So, And then once I've made the edits to one image, I'm going to select them all in the film strip down here, or you can press Control or Command and A and uh, just sync all the settings. So I'm going to press sync down here, um, check all if you haven't already, and then synchronize. If I come back to the grid view by pressing G, we can see that the settings have been applied to all of the images. And now what I could do is right mouse click, come to export, and then I actually have a preset called stack. I'm just gonna show you guys what's going on here. So I'm gonna to come to file, export, and I'm gonna choose my stack preset. So what this is doing is exporting to the desktop in a subfolder, and I can rename this to um, snow beacons, for example. Um, there's no real need to rename the files. They're not videos, so I don't need to worry about that. The file settings is a TIFF, no compression, sRGB, and 16-bit in the bit depth. Make sure you're not resizing the images, no sharpening. Metadata is up to you. No need for a watermark. And then after export, so it's got open in other application, 
and the application is from the applications folder, Starry Landscape Stacker. So basically what happens is as soon as I export, the images will automatically open in Starry Landscape Stacker ready to be stacked. So whilst we're waiting for that, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where people from over 150 countries come together to take the next step in their creative journey. There are classes on an enormous range of creative topics such as photography, videography, freelancing, business, graphic design, and if you're enjoying this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy Ian Norman's course on Nightscapes. It's an amazing crash course into the basics of landscape astrophotography. I've been using Skillshare for a few years now for a wide range of different things for learning Spanish because I quite often go to Spanish speaking countries, things about freelancing and business and even videography and video editing. So things that will improve my YouTube videos. And it's also where I learned the skills to create the introduction to my astro vlogs, which so many of you absolutely love. If you'd like to join along, the first 1,000 people to click the link in the video description down below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium, which gives you access to all of the classes on Skillshare. There's no limit to how many you can try out in that month. You can download them for offline use, which I love doing just before I get on a flight. And if you're enjoying Skillshare, an annual membership is surprisingly affordable. So follow the link in the video description down below, start a new hobby, brush up on some skills, maybe start your own business in 2023. And thanks Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so the images have opened up in Starry Landscape Stack and you can see there's a bunch of red dots where it thinks the sky is. Now, just for example purposes, I'm gonna put some red dots in the foreground. If you see red dots in the foreground, you can come here to erase red dots and just get rid of those red dots in the foreground. If I get rid of that one, because that was very borderline. And then you can just click on find sky. And you can see it's done a very good job of working out what sky and what's foreground. And it's a very difficult image because the exposure value and the color of the foreground and the sky are very similar. So I'm just going to help it out by coming to the uh, options here and selecting ground and just removing the selection of the sky from the foreground. And you can actually be a lot neater with this. So you can uh, zoom into actual pixels to 100% and holding the space bar, you can drag a lot better. And I might take the sky brush here and just help it work out what sky and what's foreground. I'm just going to come down here. And yeah, you can be a lot neater and take your time with this, but for demonstration purposes, um, I'm just going to do it very roughly. Zoom to fit, and then there's an align with tab, which is optional. This basically chooses the image where it lines up the stars. So the final image will look like the image you choose for align with, because it moves all of the stars to that position. So it's optional. It usually chooses the image that's in the middle so that it moves some of them forwards and some of them backwards. But if, for example, there's an image where the stars are lined up with the foreground in some particular way that you want, you have to choose the image. So, for example, I recently shot a time lapse of Orion above the Matterhorn, and there was an image where it looked as if Orion was standing on the tip of the Matterhorn. So I selected that image to make sure that all of the stars lined up to that image when I stacked them. Then there's exclude images. So if there's any images that have got like crazy lights in the foreground or, you know, a big plane or something, I don't know, you can exclude them, but I just wouldn't export the images that I don't want. So I don't need to worry about that. Um, and then you can come down to align and composite and just to align and composite. And it does all of the alignment of the stars for you and blends it back onto the foreground, which is amazing. Now you can see we've got a much less noisy image. There's a few different algorithms you can use. Mean minimum horizon noise is the default and it's usually the one that produces the best results. And if you hover your mouse, it tells you what each one does. Maximum value, for example, chooses the brightest pixel of all of the images. So the brightest corresponding pixel. And so you can see with this mode, the lights will actually appear from each of the exposures because that was the brightest pixel uh, in all of the images. Uh, but if we choose minimum value, it chooses the darkest pixel of all of the images. So you can see it's a very dark image, but normally the best one is mean minimum horizon noise. 
you can see that the, the lights that were on the path have been removed in the averaging process and everything looks super good. If I zoom into actual pixels, just to check everything's okay, you can see there's a bit of an artifact here where the mask of the sky and the mask of the foreground meet. So what I could do is go back into edit sky and using the sky brush, I can just take that closer to the mountains and hopefully that'll fix up that little error. And there you go, there's a much smoother uh, blend going on there. So that looks a lot better. So I'm just gonna zoom back out and then you can save the current image. If you want, you can also save a copy with the mask, the sky mask, but Starry Landscape Stacker just doesn't produce the best sky mask. So I just wouldn't find this useful. I'd much rather create my own sky mask in Photoshop later if I needed it for whatever reason, but you could just come to save current image and save the image wherever you like. You could change the name if you like as well and just save the image as a TIFF file. So how many images should you stack? Like what's the optimum amount? Well, the more images you stack, the better noise performance you're gonna get. But obviously there's gonna be some issues the more you stack as well. Now the math tells us that the amount of noise performance improvements you get is equal to the square root of the amount of images you stack. So if you stack four images, you get twice the amount of noise improvements over a single exposure. If you stack nine images, you get three times the amount of noise performance over a single exposure. If you stack 16 images, you get four times. If you stack 25 images, you get five times. And if you stack 36 images, you get six times the amount of noise improvements. But if you try and stack too many images, the stars are gonna to move too much and there's gonna be an issue trying to blend that sky back onto the foreground. And there's also a point where you just start hitting diminishing returns. So at the beginning, going from like one exposure to two, to four, to six, to eight, you get a, a great increase in the noise performance. But as you start getting to 16 and 20, the improvements just start leveling off and you just start hitting diminishing returns. So personally, I'd recommend at least eight or nine images. Um, but for an optimum amount, I'd say it's about 15 to 16, but that's obviously gonna change depending on your camera. But as a rough guide, I'd say at least eight and up to 16. So I can just show you some examples. If we compare a single exposure to four images stacked and we zoom in, you can see there's a decent improvement in the amount of noise that's been removed from the image. And if we compare four to nine. So we've got four on the left and nine on the right. You can see again, there's a decent improvement in the amount of noise that's been removed. So especially in the background of the sky, starting to look a lot smoother, a little bit more detail coming out. Then if we look at nine versus 16, again, there's quite a decent improvement, especially in the background sky. It's a lot smoother now. And, um, you know, we're still seeing some decent improvements we take a look at Andromeda in the image there. It's a lot cleaner and less fuzzy and crunchy like it is in the nine image. Now, if we look at 16 versus 25, I mean, there's a slight improvement in the amount of noise in the background sky, but it's not as big of an improvement as the previous ones that we compared. So you're having to take an extra nine images, but you're not getting that much improvement in the noise. And this is why I think 16 is a bit of a sweet spot for stacking because you're not taking so many images that the stars are moving so much against the, the foreground. And again, you know, 16 images, you have to take an extra nine to see this very small amount of noise improvements. I mean, there's no denying there is an improvement, but it takes a long time um, to see that improvement. If we compare 16 to 36, for example, I mean, yes, it is noticeably cleaner, especially in the background sky, but considering you're taking 18 more images, which if you're doing 30 second exposures, that's an extra nine minutes, just for a small increase in noise, I feel like 16 is that sweet spot where, you know, you get the increase in noise performance and then you hit 16 and it starts flattening the curve. So 
16 for me is the sweet spot. Obviously, the more the better until the stars start moving too much relative to the to the foreground. But how about the comparison between Sequitor and Starry Landscape Stacker? So I've got a good example here to show you. So on the left is Starry Landscape Stacker and on the right is Sequitor. Now, it might not be obvious from this view, but if I just zoom into the tree, you'll notice with Starry Landscape Stacker, it just hasn't done a good job of masking this complex tree. And so pretty much anything within the lengths of the tips has been considered as foreground. And because of this, there are no stars in the gaps between uh, the leaves of this tree. It just looks like a composite. It just sticks out, you know, very, very obviously. Uh, but if you look at Sequitor, it's done a better job of getting in between those leaves. And, you know, you can see a few stars through the gaps in the leaves. It hasn't done a perfect job by any stretch of the mark, but it's definitely done a better job than Starry Landscape Stacker. And I'd say it's a lot more usable because you can see some of the stars through those gaps in the trees. So Sequitor is definitely better than Starry Landscape Stacker. And I've noticed this issue with sort of complex trees quite a few times now uh, with Starry Landscape Stacker. And it's a shame because whenever there was a tree, a complicated tree silhouette in my foreground, I'd always utilize stacking because I knew Sequitor would do a great job, but I can't rely on Starry Landscape Stacker to do a great job. And I wouldn't use my Star Tracker when there was a complicated tree in the foreground because you end up with like a super blurry tree in the foreground and um, trying to blend that on to a foreground tree was just absolute chaos. It's, it's impossible. <laughs> And so you have to move your tripod so that the tree is no longer blocking your view and take a clean exposure of the sky and blend that onto your tree foreground. But because of the movement of the tripod, that then makes your image a composite. And I don't like doing composite images. And now I feel like I'm going to be forced into doing these sort of mild composites because I can't rely on Starry Landscape Stacker to stack images when there's complex trees in the foreground. However, it is a workaround. There's another piece of software which I'll talk about in the next post-processing video. So make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already. And whilst you're here, do check out some of my in the field videos, some of my astro vlogs. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.